Hey, so first of all, I hope you're you're like well wherever you are in the world. What I thought I'd do today is just run you through a simple nuke particle setup I had to do at NPC at recently. Um, it was for a project, and we very quickly needed kind of a confetti explosion setup um in about an hour <laughs> so it was like okay have we got any stock footage no okay well let's jump into new particles and see what we can do so what i thought i'd do is just run you through the overall setup and and then i'm going to be giving you the nuke script as well which you can find on my website compostingpro.com and so you can have a play around with it but i just thought i'd show you kind of how i got there there's a bunch of stuff as you can see as we watch this at the end it gets a bit naff because they all kind of it's very obvious they're floating around but it kind of did the did what we needed to do for the first bit and that's probably in handles in the shot so i'll just kind of talk you through that script now um, and then yeah and then again feel free to kind of play around with it and email me if you've got any kind of like cool stuff or any questions so let's jump into the into the nuke script then so first when it comes to nuke particles you want to make a an, an emitter um so i made a particle emitter node and i've just plugged that into a card um, and what I like to do, by the way, something I really like to do, I don't think I did it on this one, but is I like to kind of set a keyframe on the rotation here so that it's kind of randomly moving around. Now, this was a door explosion, so that's probably why I didn't do it on this one. But what I'll do is if this was kind of outside, let's say, or something, and I wanted to give a random feel to it, I would just make it so that the emitter moves slowly. And what that would do is it would just give me a more natural feel, basically. So that's always something I like to do. So once we've got our emitter, I then plugged in um, a bunch of particles, basically, um, because what happens is our dot, our particle emitter itself, actually will just emit sprites. Can you see we've got these kind of just squares here? Now these are representations of where a particle is in space, and you can use these to actually you can actually render those out. Or what I like to do is I had to kind of get make a piece of confetti, right? Like that square is not confetti shaped necessarily. So here's what I did for those for those confetti pieces that would then be kind of take the place of these these squares that we have there, the sprites. So what I did is I basically sampled a color because there was some confetti in the plate. So I've taken a constant node here, and this is a color sampled from the actual plate that I was matching to. And then and then put that on a card um, that was obviously taller than it is wide like that. And now in order to get the kind of uh, bending and stuff the confetti because it was paper what I used is I used a procedural noise node this node here what this allows you to do is run procedural noise for it and you can see I've actually animated the speeds so they speed up as they're going quicker and if I play this through now this procedural noise node you can see it's added this kind of random random kind of distortion and stuff to it now that may be a bit quick and you can adjust the speed down here but that did the job for me um, so that then kind of distorts our card nicely on every single frame and gives a feel as if it's kind of blowing through wind and it's kind of that, that piece of confetti. I've then taken that and used the same thing for various different other, um, oh, let's view the procedural noise node here, and use that for various different colors. And each of those has got a random feel to it. So some are kind of moving around here and then some are swinging around everywhere and that again was just to add a random fill um, ideally I would want them to stay on the middle of the axis but for whatever reason on this shot I kind of made it so they move around a bit probably just to get more turbulence fill to them so the procedural noise node is awesome for just adding that procedural noise and distortion over a piece of geometry um, and that was incredibly useful for getting the fill of the confetti there so again, once we had that, I then plugged each one into a particle, into the particle emitter. Um, and I mean, you may not have known this already, but basically if you drag the arrow from the side here, you can see I can just keep plugging in particles and it's just gonna randomize it um, if I drag this in. So you can just keep putting stuff into there. So I could put a sphere in there as well if I wanted to. Um, and it would then emit spheres as well with everything else so you can plug whatever you want in there basically to emit and it, that's going to be geometry and you can see now as i play through this now we've got those bits of confetti now on basically where those kind of square sprites were that were taking the position you can see i've got one there so now we get a really nice feel to it with our confetti pieces um like that so let's play this through and that's the explosion so far 
And it's kind of cool, and that was pretty good. Once you motion blur them as well, you can kind of get away with a hell of a lot. So that was a really nice starting point. Um, but now it was all about kind of adding a bit of a bit of physics to it, a bit of kind of gravity and turbulence just to randomize it and give nice feel. So I just put a bit of gravity. What this is going to do is just slightly pull stuff down a little bit, so it's not going to shoot straight up. It's going to kind of slowly fade down. And then turbulence. Um, again, this is just to add a bit of random direction onto it. So, and what I probably would have done if I wasn't kind of <laughs> didn't have an hour to do it is I'd probably add the particle turbulence just before the gravity so that it kind of slowly falls after whatever turbulence is happening on it. Um, so, yeah, that would have just maybe given me a nice result. Again, it kind of did the job. What another thing I really like to use here is the particle drag. Um, this is almost a little bit like uh, terminal velocity, I'd like to think of this as. It's basically going to bunch these up. You can see here if I drag this up, they really start bunching up. Can you see that? If I drag this number up. What that means is they kind of just slow down as they go out. So they, they shoot off really quick and then slow down as if they're kind of getting some air resistance there. And then you can see that they are moving around um, and slowly just going down. That's because they've kind of hit that maximum drag and then they haven't got any more kind of velocity in that direction. And you can see they go further, the less drag they have. And then they start flowing around, which is the turbulence there. So then what I've done is um, I've actually used a particle curve node. Um, and this was to cheat how close they were to camera, which is a massive hack. But again, in ads, you can kind of do this stuff. And you probably could in film as well. But what this is doing is this bottom axis down here is the lifetime. Um, and the zero is obviously the start of its life, just it's born. And the one over here is the lifetime that you've set in. Let's see, is my new crash yes let me open it so that one is basically whatever lifetime you've actually set in the particle emitter node so what we can do then as nuke starts up is is what we can actually do is have it so that over time we can adjust the size or the color let's say of our particle and it's incredibly useful for if you want something to get smaller over time or maybe you want the color to change maybe it gets redder over time and anything like that, that's when the particle curve node comes in use. Um, and you can see my computer's kind of struggling here with this, but anyway, let's give it another go. So if we click the size, you'll see here that, and actually I'm gonna make a node from scratch just to show you exactly what's happened here. So let's plug that in. You can see very quickly um, that nothing's gonna happen first of all. So everything looks exactly the same. Now if we want to adjust the size, we go down here and tick size. And you can see suddenly they all get very big. Can you see that? If I turn this on and off, they get very big. So the reason why is because this overwrites whatever you have in the particle size down here. At the moment if I go to the size tab, you can see as soon as they're born, they start off at size one. And as they get older, which is their lifetime down here, they still stay at size one. If I drag this down this side, you can see that they start getting, if I drag this on a bit, you can see they start getting smaller as they go. Or what I could do is drag this up and then they'll start getting bigger. The older they get, the bigger they're gonna get basically. And as the lifetime goes on, you can see they start getting bigger. So what we could do is in order to cheat it coming towards camera, I could make them so they get bigger over their lifetime. Well, what that's gonna happen is, what that's kind of gonna look like is, as they come close to the camera, because the camera's over here, as they fly towards the camera, they're gonna get bigger, basically, um, the, the, the longer they stay on screen, or the longer they live for, and then it's kind of gonna cheat the fact to make them look like they're closer. Again, that's a massive hack. Um, what I'd probably have done is try to move my camera closer, and maybe adjust the particle settings. But I felt like everything else was pretty good and I didn't want to kind of play around with it too much. So that's why I ended up doing that. Um, something else you can do is you could make it so that, again, if you wanted it back to be back to that size of 0.215, then what we'd have to do here is drag them both down. And you can see we've got zero and one here. And as I zoom in, you can see we've got 0 0.1 and 0 0.2. So that's about the same size that they were. And then you can make it so they get smaller or then bigger over their life. So I could bring this all the way up and as soon as they're born, they're gonna start off at around 0.2. And when they're about to die, at the end of their life, they're gonna to get to about 2.2 size. You can see they slowly get bigger and bigger and bigger there, can you see? So that's really useful to use. Um, again, you can use that for smoke and all sorts of stuff.
So that was just a little hack. And then the potion, uh, sorry, the particle motion align is just going to make sure that they're all kind of aligned along their motion. They're not kind of going to stay um, the same kind of, they're not going to face the camera the same way the whole time. They're actually going to fly along whatever their motion is. Um, so that's why that's in there, just to kind of force them to kind of now face the way they're flying. Um, so there you go, that, that was kind of that setup. Now, one thing I felt in regards, if I go back to the quick time, is we had this really nice particles coming at the camera. And you can see we have these particles coming in here, then we also have a ton coming in from the side. Right, can you see that? And you kind of wouldn't really notice it if I played through and again, you can get away with this in that because it's ads and it's very quick. And this was just a, a one-off shot, so I wanted to do it quickly. But you can see we end up with having these particles that kind of fly in from the side there. And that was because, again, these particles weren't getting close enough to the camera for my liking. I wanted to make sure there was a feel of chaos in, in regards to the confetti in front of the camera. So what I actually did here, and what, what you can really do in the particles, is if I quickly go with that here, you can see here I've got another card um, with the same particle emitters in, and just turbulence and a bit of drag. No gravity this time, because I didn't want them to fall down. I wanted them to just fly in from the side. If I look at where these two cards are placed, you can see I've got one here facing the camera and another just basically to the side if I bring my camera in here. So we've got this card over here that's making them fly kind of this way. And then we've got this card to the side. And this one was just used to add some kind of crazy, crazy ones getting really close to the camera um, as it goes. So now what will happen is as these are emitted, you can see they just fly all the way across. And let me just put just this and this in the scene. Now if I play through, you can see now that they're going all the way in front. And again, I've really basically nudged down the number of particles being emitted here. That was at like a thousand something. So that's why there's so many going across over here. But again, my computer's already crashed, so that's why. But um, but yeah, that was just to get those foreground particles in there nice. And basically just give that kind of act of craziness. And those are those ones you can see flying in from the side. So that's my new particle setup for confetti. Hopefully you learned something there with the procedural noise in order to get the, the movement. Um, the cards as well, just to kind of have one from the side to add those really nice foreground particles. Particle curve there to make to cheat the kind of size they come towards the camera and the longer they live. Motion aligned to make sure they're all, all kind of aligned along the, the way they're facing. Um, and, and then hopefully there's some stuff in there that could be really useful in your own, in your own work. So hopefully you enjoyed that. You can get the new script at compostingpro.com and feel free to drop me an email if you have any questions or you've made up your own setup that you'd like to share or show me.